Hi there and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. My name is Adrian and today we're going to be looking at this HYBB 2600X leaf blower vacuum and shredder unit. So I'm going to open up the packaging and lay the contents out on the table for you to see. So I've laid the contents out on the table and as you can see here we have the main blower vacuum unit itself with the engine. The inlet tube for leaf collection, we shall go through all this. The leaf collecting bag. The two stroke oil to fuel mixing bottle, we shall go through that. The tool kit, we shall be using some of the tools. The two larger tubes, again these are for the leaf collection function. And the blower tubes are the two thinner tubes. And finally, we have the user's manual. Now, I do recommend that you read the user's manual thoroughly before use. So that's the contents of the packaging. So I think the first thing we'll do is set it up as a leaf blower. So we're going to need these two smaller tubes and the tool kit. So I've got the two smaller tubes here. And you'll see one of them has a screw in it. So I'm going to take the little screwdriver from the tool kit. Just apply a little bit of pressure on the inside of the screw. And just unscrew it to the point somewhere about there where it's now not sticking out inside the tube. So the object here is that when the two tubes are assembled to line this screw up with this threaded hole in the mating part. Now it does involve fitting the two parts together and revolving until they line up. What we're looking to do is to get this long rib here in line with this rib here with the Hyundai logo. So we're going to start a quarter turn anti-clockwise. I'm going to line the two up, push them fully home, and then rotate the unit into this position, as you saw, so that these are both lined up. And that will now be the correct position for the screw, as you can see, to enter down into that threaded hole we saw earlier. There we are, I've just found it there and screw the, hot, the screw down into the hole, tightening it fairly firmly. You don't need a bigger screwdriver than the little one supplied. So that's the two back, uh, blower hoses connected together. So the air outlet has a circular opening with two flats on it. And matching that, you have the same shape on the end of the tube. Now there is a lug on this tube. Now this lug faces downwards and fits in this slot that you can just about see down here. So it will fit in this orientation. So having established which way round it goes, with the lug facing down, I'll simply line up the outlet tube and push it home fully in to engage it. So in the tool kit, you'll see that there are four bolts and four nuts. There are two longer bolts, which are thinner. These are M5 bolts. We'll put those to one side. And there are two smaller nuts with a flange on them. Those are M5. We'll put those to one side. And that leaves us with these two M6 bolts and M6 hexagon nuts. On the same note in the toolkit, there are three Allen keys. We're going to need the largest or the thickest Allen key for this purpose. So first of all, we're going to start by putting from the fan cover side, one bolt in that hole and one bolt in that hole, just loosely for the time being. I'm going to spin the unit round and show you how to fit the nuts. So you will see here on the other side this hexagonal shaped hole. And this is where the nuts fit. Now you'll see the nuts have a domed side and a flat side. The flat side needs to face out. So we'll just line up the six flats there and just push the nut into position now at this point i can just hold the nut take the allen key to the allen bolt on the other side and just as you can see the bolt just starting there so i'll do exactly the same thing on the bottom there we go allen key again just get the bolt started that's them both in position and now I can firmly tighten the bottom one and the top one. You'll know when it's completely tight, you'll feel it come to a stop and you'll see the two halves of the plastic housing 
come together firmly. So that's the outlet hose fitted. So the machine in this configuration is all set up for leaf blowing. That will be just for blowing leaves. And other than putting two stroke mixed fuel in it, it's ready to go. We'll go through the fuel mixture setup a little later. I'm now going to convert it over for the vacuum type setup. So when you're collecting leaves with the vacuum, air comes in through the side of the unit and blows the leaves out through this outlet, through this tube into the collection bag. And as you can see, we've got exactly the same shape on this tube. So we simply replace the blowing tube with the vacuum tube. So it's fairly quick and simple. I'll just loosen off the two screws that we did up earlier. Pull out the blower tube again with the lug facing down. Fit that fully home. Tighten up the two screws just as we did before. That's the top one. Make sure that nut doesn't fall out and put my finger over it. Don't need to undo them completely. So that's the leaf collection tube. We now need to fit the bag onto the end of the tube. So with the recoil here, I'm just going to tip the unit down onto its side. There we are. Now you can fit this bag onto the tube beforehand. Now I've got the bag this way up with the inlet this end. And as you can see the Hyundai logo the correct way up. So you've got a spout here, you've got an outer part with the Velcro straps and an inner part. So we'll open up the inner part and just feed it over the end of the tube. Right up the tube until it can go no further, making sure the inner is pulled as well. There we are. Right up to the bend of the tube here. So now I can release the Velcro strap, simply fold over the excess material, bring the Velcro strap round, right around, back onto the Velcro, and that's the bag fitted onto the outlet tube. So we're going to assemble the two halves of the pickup tube now. So as you can see, they've both got this lug on. The smaller lug fits inside the larger lug as you push the two halves together. We're going to need the remaining two bolts, the remaining two nuts, and the middle size of the three Allen keys. So if I take the two halves of the tube, difficult to me, for me to do this showing you what I'm doing. I'll start at the bottom, put the two together, and simply push the two halves in. And I'm just looking through the two holes here until I get to a point where I see the holes line up. So I'm gonna stand it on the bench, Push it firmly, there we are. Got a little too far. I'll just get the screwdriver, use that to line up the holes first. There we are, that's great. Now I can fit the two bolts. That's one, just about through. I'll use the Allen key. I've got the wrong Allen key. The middle size one we said. Just feed that through. Same with the other bolt. Once you've assembled these, there's no need to take them apart again, but they can be taken apart if you want to store it uh, in a more compact way. Okay, on with the two nuts. Let's get it so far. Same with the other nut now. On with the nut. I'll just stop it turning with my finger and screw the bolt home. There we are. That's one. And that's the two bolts firmly tightened. So the leaf pickup tube is going to fit on the side of the unit here. But first of all, we need to open this guard, this cover here, which protects your hands when you're using it as a blower. So I'm going to take the screwdriver, and you'll see a hole in the end of the cover. I'll simply pop the screwdriver in it, and it releases this hinged cover here. 
and you'll see a little interlock switch here that won't let the machine operate or start if this guard is open. As you can see here we have a rotating blade and fan and this rotating blade would be very dangerous if the engine was running with the cover open. Hence why there's an interlock switch. So with the cover released you'll see four pins around the outside and taking the tube with it the long end upright I'll place the tube roughly in position here and you'll see these little slots the pins are going to enter into these slots and then I'm going to rotate it slightly to lock it in position so I'll simply place it in the, the hole which is there it goes in fairly simply then rotate as you saw probably about 10 degrees around and that locks this tube in position and the tube also remakes the little switch here, the interlock switch, allowing you to start the unit. So that's the machine all set up now with a collection bag, the pickup tube. I've got the shoulder strap around my shoulder holding the bag. It's a little bit long for me, but I can adjust it. So there's an adjuster on the strap here. So I'll just adjust that up a little bit. That raises the bag up. Okay. So, yeah, as you can see, it's all together ready to use this is a, could be used in the right hand or you can also use it in the left hand for the collection and chopping of leaves so we're going to move on to mixing the two stroke oil with the petrol so we do supply this bottle with the unit and the mixture we're looking for is a 40 to 1 ratio so that's 40 parts of fuel to one part of semi-synthetic one shot two stroke oil or a any semi-synthetic two-stroke oil okay so on the end of this bottle I mean this is capable of various ratios but on the end of the bottle here is a scale which shows 500 milliliters and then above it a line which shows 40 to 1 I'll bring you in on that so here we are the 500 milliliter mark and the 40 to 1 ratio mark so I'm going to fill the bottle up to the 500 milliliter line with fresh unleaded petrol I'll be quite accurate with this, get it as near to the line as I can with the bottle nice and level. And then once I've done that, I'm going to top it up with two-stroke oil to the 40 to 1 line. If I'm going to air at all, it's going to be above that line as opposed to just below it. But I'm going to aim for smack on that line. So that is how you pre-mix the fuel. So what we use is this semi-synthetic one-shot two-stroke oil. Um, it's specially recommended for use with Hyundai two-stroke engines so, and these bottles are readily available from our parts department. So I'm not going to go pouring petrol in a studio environment but I do have a half a bottle that I've mixed earlier and of course once you've mixed it up give it a good shake to mix the two-stroke oil completely in with the petrol and that's ready to use. I happen to use this little jug here so I'll decant the uh, two-stroke mixture into the jug and I can use this jug which is far more convenient for pouring it into the engine but you can pour it in from here if you're careful so you'll see the filler cap here for the fuel it unscrews anti-clockwise and it drops out of the way we have got this reminder cable uh, label here which just tells you about the 40 to 1 mixture and again it does recommend that you can use an Aspen 2 pre-mixed fuel which is a two-stroke oil and fuel mix ready made for you okay so again I'm in the studio I'm not going to pour fuel in it but I could use my jug and just top the tank up once I fill the tank up I'd probably leave it to a level just at the bottom of the spout here so I'm going to leave that label in place for the time being but I would recommend you remove that label. Okay, so turning clockwise, I've refitted the fuel filler cap. Now you'll notice here behind the recoil handle, we have the choke lever. To start the engine from cold, you need to push the choke lever up. Once the engine starts, we push the choke lever down. Okay, so for a cold start, we'll put the choke lever up. For a warm start, if you've been running the machine and you've stopped it for whatever reason and you're going to restart it again fairly quickly, you wouldn't need to use the choke facility. But for a cold start, the choke on, which is in the up position. 
Another control on the unit is the on-off switch. Fairly self-explanatory, really. That would be off, tipped backwards, so the O is down. And to switch it on, push it forwards with the one symbol. Let me just see if you can see them. Yes, you can. The one symbol forward for the on position. So for a cold start, we'd fill it with fuel. We'd turn the choke on. We'd switch it on. Now there's one more thing to do with a new machine or a machine that hasn't run for some time. And that is to prime the carburetor using the primer bulb. Now I'll show you where that is. So from the back of the unit, I'll just bring you in on the primer bulb. And you can see it there. This is the primer bulb here. Now you can see there's a little bit of fuel in this as I've tested this machine before. But we need to push the primer bulb just with one finger. You can get in from the rear and we'll push the primer bulb probably six times. But it may well be empty when you get it. But what it does is sucks fuel up from the tank to the carburetor. Once that primer bulb is full of fuel and you don't see any more bubbles, it's ready to go. It should take about six pushes. But as you can see, you just squeeze it. Now, obviously, there's no fuel in this machine at present, but if there were, it would prime. So one final control is the throttle trigger. So to accelerate, you pull the trigger just like you would on a car when you push the accelerator. There is a manual one here where you can push this lever back and it will give you throttle to save you having to pull the handle permanently while you're using it. And you can drop the speed back down using this handle which locks the trigger. If you push the handle forward, the trigger acts as a normal throttle. Okay. So I'm going to put some fuel in it now, or take it outside first, put some fuel in it in the fresh air, and I'm going to start it up. So as you can see, I put a fair amount of fuel in the tank. Now I did take it outside to put the fuel in. Obviously, whenever you're using petrol, do it in a well-ventilated area, not indoors. Outdoors, I filled this up. Replace the cap firmly. If you do spill some fuel, make sure you wipe it up. Never fill the engine with fuel with the engine running. And certainly don't do it either when the engine is hot. Let it cool down and then refuel the machine. And if you do spill any fuel, make sure that you wipe it all up before you restart the machine. Okay, so I'm going to switch the machine on. There, on the on switch. I'll put the choke in the up position to start. I've primed the carburetor by pushing the primer bulb six times, as you saw earlier on. And there's no more bubbles. I'm going to attempt to start the machine. Now you can uh, put it on the ground, hold it firmly and pull it. I just, that started, okay. A little bit of throttle, half throttle maybe, with a choke on. just switched it off now then that was a cold start I did use about a half throttle because it's never been run before this time it's warm it's run for three or four minutes so I'll turn it back on no need for the choke pull started again and it will start okay so simple to start that's the hot and cold start um, let's see it in action uh, I haven't got many leaves here to blow but I have got an area over here with a few leaves, so we'll give it a little demonstration. the hot and cold start on your HYBV 2600X leaf blower. Well, I do hope you found this demonstration useful. For more information on this or any of our other products, visit www.hyundaipowerproducts.co.uk. 
I've been Adrian, and thank you for watching.